Greetings, dear viewers, and welcome to another enlightening discussion on our channel. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more thought-provoking content. Today we delve into an issue that's been a hotbed of conversation, the UK media's relentless fixation on Prince Harry. It's a ceaseless tide of news, rumours and speculation, with an apparent inability to shift focus. This constant scrutiny not only invades the Duke's privacy, but also raises serious questions about the role and responsibility of the media. It's time we delved into this relentless obsession and what it truly signifies. To truly understand the depth of this fixation, we must first journey back to the beginning. Born as the second son to Prince Charles and Princess Diana, Prince Harry was destined to live in the shadows of his older brother, Prince William. From the outset, Harry was cast in the role of the spare to William's heir. This status, while diminishing his claim to the throne, ironically set the stage for the media's fascination. They found in Harry a unique figure, one who was part of the royal fabric, yet distant enough from the throne to enjoy a certain degree of freedom. As Harry grew, so did his reputation for bucking tradition. His rebellious youth was a stark contrast to the reserved demeanour of his elder brother. The media lapped up stories of Harry's antics, painting him as the bad boy of the British monarchy. This narrative, while often exaggerated, further stoked the public's interest in the young prince. Then came the transformative period of Harry's military service. The media, who had grown accustomed to portraying him as a wayward royal, now found themselves documenting his journey from a rebellious youth to a dedicated serviceman. His ten-year stint in the armed forces, which included two tours in Afghanistan, added a new dimension to his public persona. The media seized on this change, portraying him as a maverick prince who was unafraid to get his hands dirty. But in their eagerness to capitalise on Harry's popularity, the media overlooked the toll their incessant scrutiny was taking on the young prince. They failed to consider the psychological impact of their relentless coverage, which often bordered on the invasive. Right from the start, Harry was different, and the media couldn't get enough. They reveled in his non-conformity, his courage, and his willingness to break from royal protocol. But in their pursuit of sensationalism, they lost sight of the fact that Harry, like any other individual, deserved a certain degree of privacy and respect. This was the birth of an obsession, one that continues to plague the UK media to this day. Enter Meghan Markle, a successful actress and a breath of fresh air to the royal family. A woman of poise, grace and tenacity, Meghan brought with her a fresh perspective, a new narrative and yes, an amplified media scrutiny. It wasn't just that she was an American or a successful actress or even a woman of colour. It was all these things and more. Meghan represented change and change, as we all know, can be both exciting and terrifying. The media, already fixated on Prince Harry, found in Meghan a new angle, a new story, a new obsession. The fascination was both relentless and ruthless, with every move she made, every word she spoke, every outfit she wore dissected and discussed ad nauseum. The scrutiny became so intense that it led to the couple's monumental decision to step back from their royal duties, a decision that sent shockwaves around the world and threw the media into a frenzy. The media's reaction was swift and brutal. Accusations flew, speculation ran rampant, and the narrative quickly shifted from the couple's desire for privacy to accusations of betrayal and abandonment. The media, rather than reflecting on their role in the couple's decision, chose to double down on their relentless pursuit of the perfect scandal. Meghan's presence and their subsequent departure from royal life lit a match to the media's fixation. It was as if the media had been handed a gold mine of scandal and controversy, and they were determined to mine it for all it was worth. The result was a media circus that showed no signs of slowing down, a relentless fixation that continues to this day. It's a tale as old as time, a narrative that's been played out in the public eye time and time again. The media's obsession with the royal family, and with Harry and Meghan in particular, is a testament to the power of the press and the dangers of unchecked scrutiny. Meghan's presence and their subsequent departure from royal life lit a match to the media's fixation. The media, however, plays a significant role in shaping public perception. It's not just about relaying information anymore. It's about the narratives they weave, the stories they choose to amplify, and the individuals they spotlight. 
As we dive into the fourth scene of our discussion, we must address the elephant in the room, the media's responsibility. Responsible reporting is not merely about avoiding libel or slander. It's about understanding and acknowledging that every story told, every headline published reverberates through society, influencing thoughts, shaping views, and sometimes even swaying public sentiment. In the case of Prince Harry, the media's relentless fixation has crossed the line into intrusion. The incessant scrutiny, the unyielding spotlight, the ceaseless speculation, all these aspects have not only invaded the Duke's privacy, but also raised questions about the ethics of such coverage. Journalism, at its core, is about serving the public interest. It's about shedding light on issues that matter, giving a voice to the voiceless and holding power to account. But when the media's focus veers away from these principles, straying instead into the realm of personal intrusion and sensationalism, it's time to question whether they are living up to their responsibility. The media's role isn't to feed the public's curiosity with a constant stream of conjecture and hearsay. It's to provide us with accurate, balanced and important news. When the media forsakes this duty, choosing instead to follow the path of sensationalism, it not only fails its audience but also itself. The media must remember their duty to the truth, not the spectacle. They need to examine their approach and ask themselves if they are truly serving their audience or merely pandering to the most voyeuristic aspects of human nature. As consumers of news, it's incumbent upon us to demand better, to hold the media to their promise of delivering news that is not just titillating, but intrinsically valuable. The media must remember their duty to the truth, not the spectacle. But the power to demand change lies with us, the public. The public holds a profound power in their hands, the power to shape the media landscape. It's a power we may not always realize we possess, but it's there nonetheless, and it's time we wield it responsibly. We can begin by demanding better from our media outlets, by insisting they move away from this relentless fixation on Prince Harry's personal life and refocus their lenses on matters of greater importance. We must remember that Prince Harry is not just a public figure, he's a human being. He deserves his privacy, just as much as any of us. We need to remind our media outlets that they are not just purveyors of news, but also guardians of ethical journalism. Their responsibility extends beyond simply reporting the news. They have a duty to respect the privacy and dignity of the individuals they report on, to uphold the standards of journalistic integrity, and to focus on issues that truly matter. We live in a world that is teeming with pressing matters that deserve our attention. From climate change to social inequality, from political upheavals to technological advancements, there is a plethora of issues that require thoughtful discussion and informed coverage. And yet our media outlets seem to be consumed by the trivialities of Prince Harry's life. We, the public, can steer the narrative away from this obsession. We can choose not to engage with sensationalized stories, not to click on baseless speculation, not to feed into the media frenzy. We can choose to seek out and support media outlets that prioritize responsible and ethical reporting that focus on the issues that truly matter. It's time we used our collective power to shift the media landscape, to demand that our media outlets focus on the right things, to insist on a more balanced, responsible and respectful approach to reporting. We must demand better, for Prince Harry's sake and for the sake of responsible journalism. In conclusion, the UK media's obsession with Prince Harry is a symptom of a larger problem. We've charted the birth of this fixation, the Meghan Markle factor, and the media's role and responsibility in this drama. We've also touched upon the public's demand for change. All these threads weave together to form a tapestry of relentless scrutiny that is neither fair nor productive. To put it bluntly, the media has misplaced its magnifying glass. Instead of focusing on one man's life, the media should be shining a light on the issues that affect us all. Climate change, global poverty, political corruption. These are the stories that deserve our attention. These are the stories that matter. It's not about ignoring the royals or shunning celebrity culture. It's about finding a balance, about understanding where the line between public interest and personal intrusion lies. It's about recognizing that people, even those in the public eye, have a right to privacy. So, Let's shift the spotlight. Let's demand more from our media. Let's encourage them to focus on the issues that truly deserve our attention. 
Because at the end of the day, it's not about one man's life, it's about all of ours. It's high time the media moved on to more pressing matters. Thank you for tuning in, and don't forget to subscribe for more insightful discussions. Until next time, goodbye.